Hey guys, I want to get this uh, review out of the way. I watched this movie two nights ago, and uh, it definitely needs some more recognition, so figured I'd show it some love here. And that's The Evil Within, and it came out this year, but this has been in production for over 10 years. Uh, you know, the ba I'll give a general synopsis of this before I go into the whole backstory of it, but essentially the main guy... Uh, he I don't, I don't remember his name, uh, but uh, Frederick Kohler. He plays a mentally challenged guy, and he lives in this giant house with his brother, played by uh, Sean Patrick Flannery and uh, from Boondock Saints and Dexter and all that. But uh, he plays the older brother, and he's taken care of uh, Frederick Kohler's character. And uh, he wants to sell the house and put Frederick Kohler in like a mental health facility and all that. And uh, his girlfriend just keeps urging him to just send him to the state hospital and all that. But Sean Patrick Flannery, he just he refuses to do that. He wants to put him in a really good home and all that. And he's trying to sell this house. And he puts this big mirror in Frederick Kohler's room. And uh, Frederick Kohler hates the mirror. And you see in the beginning of the movie, there's like this big dream sequence. And uh, so he hates this mirror, and when you see the dream sequence, you see why. I don't want to give anything away with this movie, but um, essentially throughout the movie, he ends up talking to himself in the mirror, but the version he sees in the mirror is like an evil version of himself that's telling him to kill the neighborhood animals and eventually telling him to kill people and all that, and uh, basically putting all this stuff into his head, and it's pretty eerie, that whole thing going on, because it has like an Oculus-type feel. But it's a lot different too. It's not. It, it has a way different feel than Oculus, but it has a lot of the same themes as that movie. And uh, this was thought of ten years before Oculus, so that's really cool. But you know, that's the whole progression of it. He's just slowly killing these people and all that. And Sean Patrick Flannery is slowly kind of realizing what's happening. And uh, that's all I want to give away. And I gotta say, the performances of everyone in this movie is really well done. I mean, I like Frederick Kohler. He, his performance of the mentally challenged guy is not over the top to where it's annoying. It's actually pretty good performance. And Sean Patrick Flannery, I've always dug him as an actor. And his performance is pretty good too. Even his girlfriend doesn't come off as too annoying. So she's not in it that much, but sure, she, uh, she gives a pretty good performance too, especially towards the end. Like there's this whole thing with her in the basement where I don't want to give anything away with it, but yeah, it's a pretty chilling performance at the end there, but the really standout guy is Michael Berryman. He, this is the creepiest role I've seen Michael Berryman in ever. It tops how, uh, Hills Have Eyes and Devil's Rejects and Cut and Run. It, it, it surpasses his performances and all those, my personal opinion. He looks creepy. His whole character's creepy. He talks creepy. And uh, another standout of this movie is the special effects. Like, the special effects in this movie is off the chain. Uh, so really, it's all practical, too. I don't think I saw any CGI. Like, there's just some really weird practical effects in this. Like, really trippy, mind-bendy type effects. And some stuff that on paper would sound absolutely ridiculous comes across as kind of eerie. And... Uh, it, may, it even seems eerier when you know the backstory to this movie, which I'll tell you in a second here. But yeah, I definitely recommend picking this up. This is a hidden gem for sure. I know Room Ward Magazine gave it some love, put it on the cover of their magazine a few months ago when it first dropped. And uh, I'm really stoked they did do that because that's how I initially heard of it. But um, essentially, this is made by Andrew Getty, who was a grandson of J. Paul Getty, the uh, famous oil tycoon they had just made movies of with uh, Mark Wahlberg and stuff but essentially he was uh he got addicted to meth I mean he grew up with all the money he could ever want so he was like a spoiled rich kid but he ended up being addicted to meth and a lot of from what I understand a lot of the scenes that are in this movie supposedly he had went through on all these meth binges and all that and these were basically his nightmares he kind of transferred down to film and uh yeah, it's and he actually died before the completion of this movie came out. So I guess he would have been filming this over the span of ten years, and uh, you know people have come and went. And I suppose that he just like meticulously crafted every scene. He was just really, like really, uh, he wanted the, all the details. He was really passionate. This was his passion project. I heard he even sold all his Ferraris, sold all his cars, and a lot of his belongings to help 
finish this movie. And I guess he had like stopped doing meth and drugs. Like I think a few months before this actually did end up coming out and he was all gung ho on finishing it. And unfortunately, once he stopped doing all the drugs, he had died. I think his body had just uh, relied on these drugs to stay alive. But yeah, so it's really sad because this movie makes you wonder what else this Andrew Getty could have made, you know what I mean? Because he wrote it, directed it. But uh, essentially, a lot of the friends he had that worked on the movie came together and kind of finished editing it and put it together and released it. And it's only available on DVD in the States. But I know there's a foreign region-free Blu-ray that I'm definitely going to pick up because this was an awesome movie, highly entertaining. It does feel like something that came out in like 2009 or something, just seeing Ru Sean Patrick Flannery, Young, and all that. And it just has like a lot of the looks of the scenes feel really older in that sense. But uh, yeah, this thing I bought for 7 bucks at uh, Brand New at Barnes & Noble. So if you're in America, I definitely recommend ordering it from Barnes & Noble because brand new it comes $6.99. And on Amazon, I think you can get it for 9 or $10. Bucks. Uh, so yeah, definitely pick this up. It's an awesome film. You know, I, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's a, it's a 9 out of 10 just for pure originality, creativity, and the fact that there's zero CGI. So uh, yeah, really love this movie. But um, anyways, guys, peace.